this is chapter 1 computer and uh, its components of class 10 so what we are going to see today means uh, in a various part of the series is that we'll list computer applications which we use in daily basis or on daily basis we try to identify different input and output devices the process of changing that is ipo input to output the connectivity of devices with different kind of ports differentiate between the primary and secondary memory different softwares this the purpose of these softwares and then according to the size and the processing capability we try to see the difference between different type of computers so the computer is a dead machine it is nothing but collection of plastic silicon and metal once you pass the electricity it powers on even at this stage computer is not aware what to do it needs to be told so we need some software some programs some instructions for computer to actually do some work so the computer today is actually the fundamental part of information age now we use computer your handheld mobile which you are holding right now is also a type of computer previously the computers were developed for mathematical operation just to simplify and do it quickly but then now most of the you know things have changed apart from this this already always became or this is always the basis but now the storage is also a key issue and we'll start with discussing the data and information so what exactly data and information is or what is the difference between a data and the information say you collected certain data name age 32 some number years and old now this is a random data it consists of facts figures and symbols let me combine it for you ram is 32 years old or ram's age is 32 years so what we have done is we have taken these data and combined it now this line or this sentence is is an information because this is meaningful so an organized meaningful and useful data is nothing but the information so a computer now can be defined as the advanced electronic device which will take raw input as the as from the user and it uses the set of instruction we call it as program set of instructions to process the data and then provide the result to us that is the output and the result can be saved for further use or future use we'll divide or we'll talk this uh, component and other parts with respect to hardware and software so what exactly the difference between hardware and software is at the simplest level because the computer has two basic components hardware and software hardware is defined or you can say that it is known by the physical structure which can be seen or which can be touched so it is tangible it is tangible and then software software is intangible you cannot touch it you cannot feel it but you can easily see what is going on because it is clearly the effect is clearly defined now apart from this or you can say in hardware you have input devices output devices system units storage devices communication devices um, these are all the components of the computer hardware so this all uh, this one word include most of the things Hardware components now can be classified into different categories as we have just seen now. First is our input devices. You need to, you know, say somebody that you do this certain task so that he can do that that task. So you have to give some input like uh, like a human being. He has sensory organs. He sees. He listens. He tastes. And then this is the input of uh, a human being. In a similar way, a computer has the input as keyboard, mouse, see. This is mouse, keyboard, microphone, scanner, trackball, joystick, graphic tablet, di digital camera. These all are the input devices. So the functions of the input devices is that they are going to accept the data and the instruction from you, that is a user. They convert this instruction and data from human readable form to machine readable form. Means you know what is going on here because this is in English, but computer doesn't know it. Computer only knows 0110 that is the, the binary form or the machine form. So they supply this converted instruction, this one, machine readable instruction to the CPU for further processing. The output devices, because we have sensory organizing, uh, or, or, 
organs and we can see and we can then see the output okay this is red color this is a tv this is a road this is a van so output devices means those or these devices are going to give you or a user an output this can be a vdu or visual display unit a monitor a printer a plotter or even a speaker which gives you the output as sound so the function of output devices now can be summed like this it accepts the results which are produced by the computer which is in the coded form and machine readable form now it converts this coded results into human readable form human understandable form and it supplies the converted result to the user then we come to the storage devices storage device where your information or you can say data are stored so these are the devices which are used uh, to retrieve uh, from and save to the data and information such as hard drives memory sticks like the pen drives cds dvds and tape drives so the floppy disk these were developed in 1960s and these you can see this um, were developed and this is made up of see this is the outer casing this is the outer casing which is hard plastic protects the plastic disk and inside this you have a circular thin plastic jacket coated with magnetic material which will store the data and you see that even today if you download a mp3 song it will be around 3 to 5 mb but this floppy drive only this was only way to uh, have a storage this was having only the capacity of 1.44 mb data you can understand that and these disks are now dated and nobody use it now now you have hard disk so this is the hard disk this is made of your metal disk which is coated with your metal oxide which is used to store bulk of the data and this data can be you know um, can be of hundreds and uh, tens of gigabytes we'll talk about this gigabytes just now so this is the hard drive see first of all you have this base casing this is the spindle this is the slider this slider goes to that particular point where the data is you have this actuator arm this is the actuator axis and this is actual actuator this is the actuator this is your scuzzy interface connector you also call it as scuzzy this is the jumper these are the jumper pins this is the power connector these are all different platters in the form of uh, say you can say a disk which are placed one on, on another then you have this ribbon cables attached this attaches heads to logic board this is your case mounting where you are going to place it on the cabinet this is the cover mounting holes cover is not shown here actually then this is the cd rom or cd rom this can be in two flavors it can be cdr cdrw cdr this stands for compact disk and around 700 uh, you know about data mb data can be stored but only once but cdrw the compact disk this because the data can be stored and then can be erased and again can be stored so this is rewritable rw stands for rewritable dvd is digital vers versatile disk and this has the storage in the form of optical storage so these are optical storage disk which is actually similar to cd but the data is stored double sided with dual layer disk and this hold around 4.7 gb of data then we come to blue ray disk which is holding more than 25 gb of data so you can have uh, in uh, say bd blue ray disk around 30 hours of video and if you have a double layer bd you can save up to 20 hours of video then comes we come to usb universal serial bus we have now reached to 3.1 so it is giving 1 gbps and more of the speed means the data transferring speed so this is a portable memory device we all are using it now which is used to store data that needs to be transferred to the other device using the usb port we'll be discussing this shortly then we have this memory card you are aware if you have a mobile this card you will find it uh, these are the me memory card or a flash memory card these are also memory devices and they are used as the easiest fastest and reliable medium now to store and transfer data from one device to another so these are used in your digital cameras game console consoles and mobile phones now we come to the cpu central processing unit so the system unit is actually the box the cabinet which you see is actually just a box right 
And somebody, you know, would say it is a form factor. So this, uh, or cabinet, this uh, protects the internal electronic component from the damage. And it contains inside it a CPU and a memory. So the CPU interprets or understands and carries out the basic instruction that operate the computer. And memory is where the data and the instructions are held. So the processor unit is the heart of the computer. Heart, it is not the brain, but the heart of the computer. It contains of ALU, that is arithmetic logic unit, and it executes most computer operation, this A, arithmetic and logical. And the control unit is like your brain. The nerves here work as the sig signal. So it sends control signal to all other units. So this control unit and ALU, they are quite fast. Uh, they are very fast than other devices which are connected to your computer system. So this would enable a single processor to control uh, a number of external devices like the video terminals, magnetic tape, disk memories, the sensors, the displays, and the mechanical controller since they have a slower speed than the processor. Processor is real quick. Memory. So there are two types of or two categories of memory if you divide them broadly. First is primary, second is secondary. You also call this secondary as the external memory. So primary memory is very fast because the data and programs, it has to be in primary memory for execution. So RAM and ROM, read only memory, read uh, random access memory and read only memory, these are both primary memory. The random access memory or RAM is, or this refers to the memory that can be selected and used randomly. The information here disappears or they are lost when the machine is turned off or the power is turned off. So this is why this is called as a volatile memory. While the ROM is permanently built into the computer at the time of production, you will see when your computer boots up, it will, you, it will show HP, somebody will show IBM, you know, and other information also. So the information that this memory can only be read, it is only, it is not possible to write fresh information in it because this is already hardwired. And the information stays there because it is non-volatile. Okay. Then the secondary memory or auxiliary memory, the content of the RAM actually we saw is erased when the power is switched off. So it becomes very important for us to have uh, some sub, uh, scenario so that we can save the data for future use. So primary storage is expensive. So we need this uh, backup storage. For that we have secondary memory. This is also an important part of the computer. Now before we go ahead, let us uh, talk about the memory. See. This 0, 1, 1, 0, these are all bits. This is, they are bits means uh, binary digit. Binary digit, so it can be 0 or it can be 1. So if you combine 4, means 0, 1, 0, 1 type of uh, combination, you call it as 1 level. If you combine 8 of these, means, say, I'm just writing some random number. I don't know what it is, but let me count it. These are 8. So these are 8 bits, we call it as 1 byte. You have 1000 bytes, it becomes kilobyte. You have 1000 kilobytes, you get 1 MB. And likewise, you go up to 1 petabyte. So this was the first part 